So Tony Greenstein, I agree with him on actually quite a lot. Uh, but when he says things like, well, if you believe, if you, if you call Jews killers of Christ, you're an anti-Semite. If you engage in Holocaust denial, you're an anti-Semite. I think Mr. Wadsworth said, if I understood him correctly, and I might be wrong here, but he opposed the publication of David Irving's Diaries of Goebbels because uh, Irving is a, a Hitler apologist. I think all of that, the labels like anti-Semite, I don't know if Jews killed Christ or not. Frankly, I don't really care all that much. It doesn't keep me up late at night or exercise me when I get up in the morning. Uh, but those are sorts of things which should just be debated, disputed, and you come out with your own conclusions. Did he? Did the Jews do it or did they not? Um, when Mel Gibson made his film, Passion of the Christ, he started off by blaming, he seemed to have started off by blaming Jewish moneylenders or you know, Jews in the temple for um, Christ's killing, and then he was forced to change the script. Um, I don't see why anyone should be forced to change anything. Express your point of view. If somebody disagrees with it, let them disagree. I don't see why uh, one has to get uh, so excited about it. In the case of David Irving, uh, well, David Irving was a very good historian. I don't care what Richard Evans is. He was a very good historian. He produced works which are substantive and I happen to have read the Goebbels uh, diary, his book on Goebbels. Uh, he had stolen the plates, uh, which were uh, stolen the plates of the uh, diaries and then wrote a book on it. Um, I thought the book was frankly mediocre, but it certainly should have been published. I mean, mediocre books, there are about 1,000 mediocre books published each month versus one good book. So if it falls in the category of mediocre, Okay, um, not a big deal. I don't see why one would want to stop publication of it. it doesn't register with me. If you don't like it, don't read it. Uh, and uh, it actually, in the case of Irving, uh, he knew a thing or two. Actually, he knew a, a thing or two or three. Uh, he's a, he is competent, uh, and so far as I can tell. Uh, the same thing. Uh, with this rapper, Mr. Wiley. Uh, I had some correspondence this morning and last night with Jamie Sternweiner and with Deborah McCoby because I asked them to prime me for today. Uh, Jamie was kind enough to uh, send me all the tweets. Uh, some of the tweets I agree with um, Jackie Walker. Some of the tweets were awful, I guess. Some of them were... Um, provocative, I suppose you would call it. I mean, some of the tweets, I have to say, he one of the tweets, the first one that Jamie sent me was with the pictures of the Bolsheviks who are uh, allegedly responsible for the, the Bolsheviks and their comrades, who are allegedly responsible for the murder of millions of Christians. And they had a picture of Leo Jogishis. I thought to myself, who even knows who he is? I know who he is. He was Rosa Luxemburg's first lover. And he was the head of the Polish uh, left-wing communist party. But nobody even knows who he is. I suspect the only one here, the only two people here um, who know him are um, Tarek and uh, Tony. Uh, not exactly the biggest figure, even the pantheon of socialism. Uh, not exactly a big figure. So I don't see... What's the reason to get excited? I don't see the reason to get excited about Holocaust deniers. First of all, I don't know what a Holocaust denier is. I don't. Because some people say if you deny that the centrality of the six million Jews being killed and you try to bring in other groups of people, you become a Holocaust denier. Other people say if you deny the centrality of the gas chambers, you become a Holocaust denier. So by that standard, strangely enough, and I guess Ta uh, Tarek and Tony will be the only ones to remember, by that standard, um, Daniel Jonah Goldhagen, the author of Hitler's Willing Executioners, that, that, that best-selling uh, schmata, uh, he's a Holocaust denier. 
because he claimed that the core of the Holocaust didn't occur in the gas chambers. He said it was in the killing fields uh, that the essence of the Holocaust occurred. And then um, the fellow who, his name just slipped my mind, but it'll, you can help me with that, the, who made the 12 hour film Shoah, uh, Lansman. Lansman. Right, so then Lansman started to accuse Goldhagen of being a Holocaust denier because Lansman focused on the gas chambers. And then the question of the numbers, how many were killed? Well, those are statistical scholarly questions. Why can't we just answer a number with a number and present our sources? Some African, some African Americans will tell you a hundred million Africans perished in the African in the Middle Passage. A hundred million Africans perished. I was very surprised when I read Robin Blackburn's History of Slavery. Uh, he put the number at 1.2 million. I'm almost certain of that. Now, does that mean that Robin uh, Blackburn is a slave trade denier? Or do we just go through the numbers? We evaluate, assess, any serious scholar does. I don't see the point of becoming hysterical over these issues. Uh, you just patiently wade through the evidence. If you don't agree, you explain why you don't agree. Uh, I don't believe in censoring any of these people, um, including, I would have to say, I don't agree with uh, censoring the rapper, Mr. Wiley. He has the right to say what he wants, and if you don't like it, you know, go somewhere else, actually get off of Twitter and maybe crack a book. Uh, that might be an exciting adventure for you. Uh, and for, uh, on a second related matter, I'm much more exercised by Mark Regev appearing so respectfully on British television, uh, justifying the murder of, in the case of Operation Protective Edge, justifying the murder of 550 Palestinian children, justify the murder of or the destruction of 18,000 Palestinian homes. Uh, that, access, that really makes me very indignant, very angry. He has the right to do it, but it makes me much angrier than what Mr. Wiley has to say about the Nazi Holocaust. Um, in the same way in the US, Kanye West, he says all sorts of lunatic things every other day. He says slavery wasn't so, Kanye West of course is African American, but he says slavery couldn't have been so bad because blacks accepted it for 400 years. And then he said, Harriet Tubman, the great leader of the Underground Railway, he said she didn't really free slaves um, because she ended up finding them jobs with other white employers. As if, you know, her responsibility was not just to get, get slave African Americans out of slavery, but she had a responsibility to give them a lifetime pension. Uh, rappers say stupid things. Rappers say lunatic things. I mean, I think it's your problem if you look for political wisdom from a rapper. Okay, in my stupid youth, I looked for political wisdom from um, Jane Fonda and Glenda and um, oh God, Red, and Vanessa Redgrave. Okay, that was dumb. I'll agree, but. To get hysterical, to get exercised, I, I don't see it at all. If you want to get exercised, get exercised by people who are apologizing in public for crimes that are being committed in real time, in real time. Not about what somebody has to say about the Nazi Holocaust or about slavery or about the Middle Passage. Maybe it's dumb, maybe it's not dumb, but we can just go through the normal protocol of trying to separate our truth from lies.